Uh, right here. What? What? Yeah, dude, we'll talk later, Plank. This just in! The Geneva Convention has been amended to ban the use of mountain-moving megaphones in both warfare and pretty much every other use imaginable. Especially for calling friends to remind them to write, and for yelling at newscasters to give them a lead on a story! I'm sorry, Pinkie Pie, I forgot to write, but next time could you speak using your normal voice? I'm Joe Stevens, and this is the Equestrian Inquirer! What? What? Plank? No, I'm not feeling better! Why would I need to get wetter? Oh, a letter! Oh, okay, a letter, okay. Dear Pinkie Pie, thank you for the care package. Next time, could you please send cupcakes or cookies and not a pair of rabbit badgers? <laughs> Pike had to get a rabies shot and we had to lock Tech Rat in the bathroom to fight to the death with the badgers. We haven't heard from him in days. P.S. No, I don't think it would be a good idea to attach a flugelhorn to your giant megaphone. That ringing isn't going away anytime soon, though. But that wasn't from Pinkie Pie yelling at me through her giant megaphone. It was because she hit me in the head with a muffin pan. But, <laughs> let's be honest, that was my fault. It was hit people with a muffin pan Thursday. I... Uh, it's a holiday. Somewhere. Good evening, Ponyville. Big news to deliver this evening. Beloved male pony and international fish wrestling champion Derpy Hooves has been accepted into the Wonderbolt Academy. As a result, all mail throughout Equestria has been lost. All letters left undelivered. All care packages lost in transit. All anvils to be dropped on ponies' heads dropped on the sender's heads. All questionably purchased body parts bought on an anonymous auction site left to rot and fuel no more crime. Sorry, Lyra. Looks like you won't be getting that transplant after all. Now that your purchase from malnourished Indian Child 41 at organsanonymous.com won't be delivered. Sad, really. The good news is that Derby Hooves has completed the most of the Wonderbolts trials in record time. Her mastery of the Dizitron machine, used to test Pony's abilities to recover after being turned end over end, was unparalleled. Derpy, finishing this trial in 4.8 seconds, made a new record for the Wonderbolt Academy. It seemed that even the Dizzytron's maximum settings were unable to phase Derpy, and she could not become disoriented. She did, however, start to make rattling noises toward the end, which has led credence to the theory that Derpy is hollow and there's something clanging around inside of her. More on that in future episodes. When it came to maneuvering speed and racing, there was simply no pony that could match Derpy Hoops. While there is no technical penalty for doing every single event flying backwards, the Wonderbolts judges monitoring Derpy's performance were both impressed and confused by this method of flight. Even Rainbow Dash couldn't keep up. But this is probably because she was absolutely baffled that Derpy could break the sound barrier flying backwards. Was there a sonic derp boom Yes. It sounded like this. How Derby was able to make a sonic derp boom while traveling at three miles an hour and eating a sandwich, we'll never know. The only problem came from the partners section of the Wonderbolt Academy. Derby's hoof-selected partner, Zed the Zebra, was sadly not able to keep up with his partner. In other news, the Wonderbolt Academy and Zebra Potion School Student Exchange Program has been cancelled following what can only be called a sad and easily predictable tragedy. Hey citizens of Canterlot, remember a week ago when there was that big fancy gala at the Super 7 Hotel for <laughs> Horneria? And that concierge said you needed to give your thousand bit donation at the door? And then how once you paid up, there was only a carton of milk and a single piece of cheese in there? Remember how mad you all were, but then none of you could break the chains that... 
someone put on the door, so you just kicked it all night until you realized you needed to conserve oxygen or lost it all or something, and fell asleep, and then one of you told Luna what happened and she came and got you, but by then that mystery concierge was long gone. Remember? Well, this episode of the EQI is on you! <laughs> Chumps. We have received a final report on the devastation following the incident with the Wonderbolt Academy. No, I'm not referring to Wonderbolt's bullseyeing apple bloom from the sky with faux calm torpedoes. That's necessary target practice and she's not much bigger than 3 meters wide. I'm referring to Rainbow's game. As you already know, mainly because she yells it at your face at any given opportunity, Rainbow Dash is the best flyer in Equestria. Because of this, she was chosen as leader for the cadets at the Wonderbolt Academy. There they put her through a string of tests and challenges to see what she and her team was capable of. The Wonderbolts had Rainbow and her fellow cadets spin and recover from the Dizitron, recover hidden flags, and break up large clusters of clouds. What Rainbow Dash did not know, could not know, was that these games were actually real-life assaults on the Changeling homeworld and resulted in the complete eradication of all Changelings. The Dizitron was meant to distract the cadets while the Academy was moved into position over the Changeling homeworld, and is not a dizzying machine, but in reality a faster-than-light speed transport. While in the machine, magic was used to make the ponies think that they were doing mag menial tasks in the clouds and not a hostile alien world. Their recovery forced them to adapt to the new environment. The recovery of flags, a scouting mission to uncover changeling hives and mark them for destruction, and the breaking up of clouds, that was the final mission of the destruction of all changeling life. Captain Grazer Rackham of the Wonderbolts organized this high-risk raid. He stated, we had to convince Rainbow Dash that this was a game, so she could see those bugger changelings as clouds and not clones. Rainbow Dash was not aware of this, however, and has been seen wigging out, having difficulty accepting her actions. Now that Rainbow's game is finished, we'll sadly be faced with a trilogy of emo drivel while Rainbow talks about how bad Xenocide is. In order to memorialize the changelings, Rainbow Dash recruited Derpy Hooves to chronicle the changeling life and become Speak Derp for the Dead, which is as boring as it is stupid. Oh look! Tech Rat has escaped from the rabid badgers. Hope you got your vaccinations all in order, folks, because here's Tech Rat with this week's Mares in a Minute. Highway to the danger zone. Highway to the danger zone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Um, uh, uh. This past week, equestrian scientists made one of the most incredible and shocking discoveries of our lifetime. More important than a solution to global warming. More amazing than a cure for hoof and mouth disease. More significant than finding out how Zakora can do that crazy pole balancing thing without falling on her face. Yes, scientists have discovered that Pinkie Pie, who had previously been found to be able to defy physics, time, space, and diabetes, also has the ability to exert super pony strength, but only when she's giving hugs. The research suggests that when Pinky wraps her hooves around you for a snugly wuggly embrace, she has the capability of exerting a force of over 900 pounds per square inch, or more if she's really, really happy, which is easily enough to, uh, to crush an unsuspecting pony's ribs into powder before they can return the cuddly gesture. Combined with her ability to stretch her hooves to incredible lengths to ensnare multiple ponies at once, and her noted mental instability, this makes Pinkie Pie the, the most, most dangerous, dangerous hugger in Equestria. A number of tests were con conducted which led scientists to this conclusion. After luring Pinkie to the lab with the promise of a circus-themed slumber party, they began having her hug various objects, from bales of hay to steel beams to grizzly bears, to see what her limits were. They discovered that the more excited Pinkie was, the more devastating her hugs became. Simply telling Pinkie to hug the bear didn't have much of an effect, but after getting her excited by saying it was the bear's birthday, she exerted enough force around his midsection to pop him like a tube of toothpaste. Thankfully, the scientists had spare bears available for further testing. With these findings now public, ponies everywhere are now afraid of getting on Pinky's good side for fear of becoming a hugging target. They hold no animosity to Pinky herself, they just would rather not be crushed like a grape. Rainbow Dash, Pinky's close friend and the co-conspirator in the Great Town Hall Pudding Prank of 2011, has admitted that her most recent encounter with Pinkie Pie was harrowing and that she barely escaped with her life. 
Rainbow Dash said that upon discovering that she had been accepted into the Wonderbolt Academy, Pinky leapt upon her and ensnared her in a hug that felt like, and I quote, being squeezed in a vice while an army of elephants clog danced on my chest. After a few terrifying seconds in Pinky's grip, Rainbow Dash said she could feel her ribs beginning to crack, and that became very hard to breathe. She believes that, had she been in Pinky's embrace much longer, she would have likely passed out from asphyxiation, lapsing into a hug-induced coma. Pinky is now undergoing weekly training sessions to learn to control the devastating power of her hugs. Until she is able to keep the incredible strength under control, her, hop her options for greeting other ponies will be limited to waving, hoof bumping, and doing the sunshine sunshine dance, which Twilight has offered to teach since, she since it involves minimal physical contact and should pose no safety risk. Well, when Pinky was asked for comment, she said she was optimistic that she could learn to keep her hugs in check, and that she was extremely proud of the progress she had already made. Then, before anyone could stop her, she gave herself a big squishy hug. She was immediately rushed to Pointyville Hospital for cracked ribs and internal bleeding, and is currently in stable condition. And in other news, this year's hottest heartwarming Eve, Eve toy, the Dizzytron for Kids by the Merchandise Corporation, has been recalled by the Equestrian Safety Committee over fears that it poses a safety hazard. The committee has said that the toy can cause significant head trauma due to riders being spun in a circle at insane speeds, and that children can be launched from the device when it reaches its peak rotation, causing them to be flung through the air screaming incoherently and flailing about helplessly like a rag doll. There have already been reports of ponies being seriously injured by the toy, which purports to offer kids the chance to train just like the Wonderbolts. The committee says the toy is too close to the actual Dizzytron used by the Wonderbolts Training Academy. And though such a device is appropriate for adult Pegasi, a version should never have been created for five-year-olds. On top of that, the committee has noted that nowhere on the box did it specify that the toy should not be used by unicorns or earth ponies, as neither have the ability to save themselves after being launched into the air at 100 miles an hour. When reached for comment, Merchandise said that they did not want to discriminate against two-thirds of their target audience by adding such a warning, and that any pony who climbed into the, into the device knew what they were getting into. As part of the recall program, the committee has stated that anyone who returns the toy may exchange it for another Merchandise product, including the popular holiday items Teddy Bear Switchblade, Bees in a Jar, and Bag of Glass. Back to you, Joe. We have word from Ivan, who was at the Wonderbolt Academy. Ivan, how were the events? How many times Ivan have tell Joe Stevens, Ivan is not Pegasus? What's wrong, Ivan? Ivan currently falling from 10,000 feet. What? Is okay. Ivan have maybe 30 seconds, give report. Well, okay, but be quick about it. I mean, Ivan very much enjoy Wonderbolt Academy. Did Joe Stevens know Wonderbolts what have classified cloaking devices on their wings? No, I didn't know that. Ivan learned this by sneaking in on Spitfire in shower. Is why Ivan currently falling, what to certain death. Not so good for health. Ivan, you shouldn't be looking at Spitfire that way. That's juvenile and Ivan disgusting. Ivan have needs, Joe Stevens. Ivan need make table. Ivan need muffin. And Ivan need fan Fantasize about Spitfire in... Ivan? Ivan? Well, serves you right. She's a pony, not some pinup. Shame on you. Go fantasize about Sailor Moon like a normal adult. Speaking of something to fantasize about, here's LTT Moose with this week's Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. Hi, Joe! I'm here plummeting off the edge of the Wonderbolt Academy to get an exclusive interview with Rainbow Dash as she achieves her lifelong dream! Call sign LTT Goose, this is Mission Control. Your vector is locked in and you are approaching terminal velocity. Suggesting shoot deployment in T minus 10 seconds. Copy that, Mission Control! Rainbow Dash, you spent years trying to prove that you are the best flyer in Equestria. Now that you are on the verge of proving it, do you have anything you'd like to say to everyone? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Eloquent as always, Dashi. Care to give any thanks to the people who may have got you where you are today? LTT Goose, you're past the brake line. Deploy your chute now! Negative mission control, I've got this! Just a few more seconds! Goose, deploy now! Eject! EJECT! I say again, negative, negative, I got this, I got... Uh, uh, uh. 
Mayday! Mayday! Goose is in a tailspin! No good! It's full of slash picks! No, if the card came from William Gibson, I might have read it, but... Uh. Thank you, LTT Moose. This just in. The Wonderbolts have been sued over their banning of all non-Pegasi from membership in the Wonderbolts. Ponies are crying that this is discrimination to not allow Earth Ponies and Unicorns into the Wonderbolts. In order to defend themselves against further lawsuits while not actually solving the problem of discrimination, the Wonderbolts have instigated a don't fly, don't tell policy. This means that all cadets for the Wonderbolts will be dropped from 10,000 feet. If they fly, great! If they don't fly, well, then the Wonderbolts don't tell any pony that that cadet just fell to their death. Most ponies think that this is a totally legit policy and will in no way pose problems in the future. And here's Mason Alcat with this week's Chomping at the Bit. Hearing all this word about Rainbow Dash, again, the acceptance of the Wonderbolts has got me thinking about old times. You got me thinking about old friends and how we hard ways. I got searching, and I found a little old buddy of mine. He decided to share a drink with the local pub. Talk about the old times. Well, shoot, if it isn't Sure Shot Cool Cat himself. I haven't seen you around here in years. How you doing, you old firecracker? It's always nice to see an old friendly face, Salty. You're right, it's been way too long. I heard you finally got hitched. What luck! Or should I say, what unlucky mare got paired up with you? <laughs> Folks, this is Salty Legs. He and I have been friends since we first went to boot camp together. Yeah, those were some good times. Well, they weren't all good. As I recall, you and Jester always seem to find ways to get us into trouble. As I remember it, it was you who kept getting us into the most skirmishes, cool cat. Can I look at some more photos with me? How we got this time. Yeah, it's always nice to look back every now and then. We had both enlisted in the World Guard, and somehow we ended up in the same battalion. Oh, yeah. Or the great power war between the Celestian Empire and the Great Griffin Republic. Those were the days. Yep, it was you, me, and Jester. Three lonesome troublemakers, if ever there were any. After boot camp, we said we'd try to stay together as much as we could. In those days, it was easy to get assigned to the same squad, and friends would stay friends almost for life. You remember the time we went to Norhay and earned our Equestrian Art Service ribbon? Yeah, tell me about it. It's the worst time I ever had in the service. I hated the cold. Yeah, but we found some ways to stay warm, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I always had to drink it two other bars before all heck broke loose. That's not how I remember it. You're the one I was hitting on the bartender. She wasn't pretty feeling though, I tell you. Well, we were all young and stupid. But things started getting worse as talk of the war was on the horizon. <sighs> yeah, we'd have to gear up soon, and we would have to go to different companies. You had to be a com, Bubba. So you were in the command center all the time. Just and I were the ground pounders. Hey, I spent time out in the field, too. Who do you think took all these pictures? Seeing as you're in most of them, I'd say someone else. Whatever happened to Jester, anyway? It was a dark time that day Jester bought the big pie in the sky. 
We're all out of routine patrol. Jester got wind that we were being flanked by a squad of no good high flinging griff griffin graders. We told him not to go out on his own, but you know Jester. There you go, tell him that it ain't anything once he gets his mind made up. If there was glory to be had, he'd have it. At least that's what he was saying before every patrol. His reckless behavior would get us all killed eventually. But he was the leader of the squad at times, so who are we to question? Well, it wasn't Glory that got him taken out of service. No, he stupidly took a wrong turn after knocking over a horse net and ended up falling off a cliff. He'd been paying attention to what he was doing. Instead of chasing some crazy dream of becoming a war hero, he wouldn't end up breaking his own neck. Well, being a leader does mean making the right decisions for everyone. Well, too bad Jester didn't see it that way. Well, you ready for another round? Sure, why not? Back to you, Joe. What? What are you doing? The episode's not over yet and you're reading. What is... No, I'm not mad at you. Only because it's Kurt Vonnegut. All right. Thank you, Mason Alcat. I have just been notified that Ivan is fine. He landed on his head, so he's perfectly okay. Be sure to turn in this Friday, December 21st, for the premiere of a new project by the makers of the Equestrian Inquirer. And a big announcement. LTT Moose and Joe Stevens, myself, will be present at Las Pegasus Unicon this February. Tune in for live coverage on Everfree Network as Joe Stevens and LTT Moose show you what it's like to be at Las Pegasus Unicon. There's going to be live coverage from the floor, interviews, all sorts of fun things. There probably will be gambling. It is Las Vegas, and we hope to return with our shirts. I'll leave you with that. I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been the Equestrian Inquirer. Good night, and good buck. No, Plank. No, this is good stuff. You just need to get off that Ender Cycle stuff. Don't you even suggest that! No. No! No! You're, you're, Plank, your tastes in literature are terrible. Harry Potter sucks.